or disc. I feel like oh. God damn it. Hey guys, look at these eagles. Awesome. Hey, what's up everybody? Ryan Cook here. We are at the end of salmon season where I am carving and I wanted to do a catch and carve video. Oh, look at the birds, they're flying away. I've spooked the eagles. There's so many eagles on the property because there's so many chum salmon and all the salmon are starting to spawn out I bet you we'll even run into some oh there's one right eagle there eagle there look at all the eagles there holy moly oh my goodness holy I've never seen that many in my life look at that oh I hope you guys are seeing this wow there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, one, twenty, two, twenty, three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. There's like forty eagles. Look at all the fish. There's fish still struggling to stay alive. The eagles are just getting them like crazy. Look at that eagle there's a heron there's a heron right there this is incredible <laughs> there's eagles everywhere i've never seen anything like that there's fish everywhere so i want to do i don't know if there's any keepers or any coho that will still be in the river but i figured let's do a catch and carve video we're gonna catch a fish and then we're gonna carve it back at the shop. So, and maybe an eagle will wanna eat it. How cool would that be? But I doubt that will happen. We're here in Squamish, British Columbia. It'd be awesome if we do this all in one take. Just catch one right away. I don't even know if the fish are still in, but We'll find out real shortly here. Cause that would be awesome. If we just snapped right into one. There's just eagles everywhere. This is incredible. I've never seen anything like it. That is so cool. Oh, a fish just surfaced right there. So there's chum in the water. Come on, baby. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna catch the fish, hopefully, and then we'll take a picture of it. We'll go back to the shop, we'll template it out, and then we'll carve it up. And the thing about, oh, yep, yeah, got one. Nice. Oh. oh, it's a nice coho. Look at this. Amazing. Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> awesome. Come on, little fella. Look at you. You bit it and everything. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Come here, buddy. Come on. Yeah, perfect. Come right up there. Nice, look at you. Look at you, buddy. That is awesome. So, that's what we are looking for. We're gonna get a nice picture of them. We're gonna get them, keep them in the water. You're okay, buddy. Don't worry, you're going back. You're going back, don't worry. We'll get you right back, buddy. We gotta get a picture of you. Okay. Barbless hook, of course. I'm gonna do the worst thing ever and put my rod on the rocks. And we're gonna get my phone out quickly. And we're gonna snap a picture. Where is my phone? I thought I brought it. 
There it is. Cool. Okay, little guy. So we'll line them up perfect. Oh, you're okay, buddy. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Oh, calm down. You're going back. You're going back. Don't worry. Just stay down for one second. There we go. We're going to get his tail up. Nice fish. And there it is. Perfect. We got the picture we need. I'm going to put his tail up a little bit just for the template so he's like swimming up the river. And then we'll get him back in the water and release him and get him back at the shop. Oh, calm down, buddy. I got you. There you go. Yoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> oh, man. I hope this is filming. Okay. Yeah, it is filming. I hope that that worked. So, we just caught a coho and we are now got the pictures. So let's head back to the shop. We're going to carve one out. We're going to template it. I'm going to talk about templating and then carving a salmon. A, wi uh, a wild coho that we just caught. Welcome to Ryan Cook Carving. This is the catch and carve. <laughs> awesome. Yoo-hoo! Look at all the eagles. It's insane. Bet you those guys wanted that. <laughs> okay, we're back at the shop and now we're gonna go. I've got this projector here. We've talked about it over the years many times. Amazon, Bluetooth, probably at this point outdated and I need to get a new one. I am going to look for a slab here in the shop. Got my new treadmill, real nice. And uh, see if we can find something that'll be nice. This thing's got to be a little bit bigger than this. And this could work. Uh, it's too thick. But this could work if it's thick enough. Oh, this is a slab I got from Pete Ryan. After he passed, his wife sold me this slab. So this would be the perfect thing. So what we're gonna do is use this. I'm gonna get it set up right now. We're gonna get carving. I'm gonna blacken the shop out and then we're just gonna project this fish I might alter it a little bit. This isn't the perfect profile, but we're gonna take the same species and then we're gonna put it onto uh, there and then we're gonna get it set up on the jaw horse and then we're gonna block it out, finish it out and we're gonna make a really nice fish and we might even put a uh, name inside the middle. I can't remember if that's what's uh, part of the commission or not, but whatever, we're doing it. So. Okay, so 
I'm gonna do this video a little bit different than normal, aside from my Ronald McDonald hair today, um, which is wild. I'm just gonna carve, stop, and talk, and then get back to it. So uh, we're just gonna do longer form video. If I go off on a tangent, I go off on a tangent. If you enjoy this, great. It's what it is. So, you know, when you do in these punch outs, you know, you use a profile picture. The fish that I had wasn't exactly a perfect profile. It didn't have the high fin that I wanted. I like this, so I'm gonna use that as best I can, but I'm gonna have to drop it down because I don't have the, uh, the depth of the log. So I'm gonna make it kind of folded a little. And then, you know, when I'm doing this, it's all about punching it out. I've said it before, say it again. Punch it out. You gotta stay true to your lines all the way through. Wherever that line is, you saw I did a little pre-cut there. Then I pushed in and then I cut it right out. Just committed to it. And then you can see I'm starting to kind of shape in the head, thinking about a thicker dorsal because it doesn't need to be much thicker than that. And, or it doesn't need to be thinner. You know, you can accent that and kind of create those accents from it. And then I'm gonna have to, the only thing that's gonna have to really happen is I'm gonna have to find a way to balance here to this depth. And you need to be careful when you're setting your depths for like the mouth, the eyes, the things like that. Because everything that's here, this is the furthest point out. That now has to be recessed. So I'm gonna have to get a longer bar and cut it out. But you can see, look at this grain. Once I get this thing sanded, I'm just gonna sand this thing down to like beautiful, maybe 120 or 220, something like that. Really expose this grain. Very light textures in here to kind of showcase the fins. And then nice detail in the face, but really we're gonna show the wood off in this piece. And then I cannot remember if there is a sign. If there is a sign, I'll use, you know, one of my saber tooth bits, uh, probably, ooh, probably something like this. Maybe not this one, cause it's concaved in, but uh, something like this maybe, that's going to be, would have to have that top part. But it's gonna make it a clean, clean cut, and then we'll burn it and uh, put paint and then resand. So it, it's gonna be really nice. You know, when you're doing these things, the, the punch out of a profile really does speed it up and it all goes into planning. And I thought about that a long time ago when, uh, you know, Foltz, Chris Foltz was my mentor. He said, the more you plan, the faster it is afterwards. So yes, this looks fast right now because we've ripped it up, but it all goes into the planning. I've done these fish before and I've, I've mapped them out. So if you take the time to prepare, plan, then you'll have a better block out, you know? Block, shape, form, detail the hell out of it, make it beautiful, in the great words of Chris Foltz. So that's where we're at now, let's keep going and uh, we'll, we'll keep puttering along here.
Okay, here we go. Now we're at the point to where I think I'm gonna start sanding it. I'm gonna use the Makita angle grinder with a uh, four inch blade or disc. I feel, oh, fuck. <laughs> That's why I don't like the paddle grinders. I got this and I totally forgot. And I have my music in, so. Can't hear anything, woo! Got lucky there. Little, uh, little burn. Little burn. So, yeah, four inch disc, four inch angle grinder. That's why I don't like paddles, but they're good for the bigger stuff. Um, I, I prefer the ones that uh, flick the switch on. But that's just me, because a lot of the times when you use those other, other discs, like that big one back there, you know, they're way too big, and if they kick back and you've got it on and it flips and it's double-edged sword, just be careful, that was silly. Um, yeah, so one thing too, you, you might notice in my, uh, I was just about to show you, is I put two of these back to back. So I'll use an old one that I've already kind of done and uh, used, and then I put the new one on top of it and, and it works great. I think that's a, a great way for me to maintain the strength of the disc because if you have the wrong size disc, it will hurt you and it will break and you have to be very careful with that. As you just saw, you know, you can't script that stuff. So now it's got a nice shape. I was thinking of using the saw to kind of, you know, shape it out. You saw me doing that there. That's why it's rough here. And you don't have to worry about this roughness as long as you look for clean lines, you know? Like here, I can see just by looking, there's something here. So I'll sand that down, tuck this in, and then I've got a little crack that's just kind of popped out that I just didn't see, which sucks. But I will have to deal with that before, which means I'm gonna either have to find a way to glue it, possibly screw it from underneath, or, Maybe get a clear drying wood glue, widen it as much as I can, and then uh, widen it as much as I can, then clamp it down and relaminate it or completely break it off. But regardless, I will have to fix that and address it. So now we're moving into detail. We're going to use the grinder. I'm going to get out the Dremel with the saber tooth, really shape out the eye, and then start really looking at the face. You know, the little the little gills, you know, the lines here, the layers, look at the scales. I'm not gonna worry about the scales too much on this, but uh, because I'm going to, because I'm going to uh, expose the grain and use the grain, I think this is too nice, you know, like this is beautiful here. I love the colors, it'll look, it'll look amazing when it's done. But, uh, you know, in looking at this picture, which is different from most of my other ones, is this eyeball here. It's the eye socket, that hole. And if you look at, like, the skeleton right here, if you look at the eyeball hole here, look at the eyeball hole here in this skeleton, you can see that's how it is, right? So this is all either the inside eyeball with the lid over top of it, and it moves, and that's what's able for the fish, or that's what's able to make the fish see. So I'm gonna really kind of focus on that. I think every time I do a carving, I try to improve on my last carving. I did a really cool one of these in the summer. And this one, I'm gonna try to do the eyeball better. I'm gonna try to make it flow a little better. That's the thing, you know, a lot of the times we do the same carvings all the time. In this one, I'm gonna try to push, myself to get better and that's how you do it you do a thousand different bears every time you're a bear carver for me to not lose my mind i try to make everyone different try to make everyone just a little bit better or find something different to make it new and fun all right let's go back to it
Joker. God damn it. Okay, so that's my own fault for not taking care of it. I kept thinking to myself, this thing's moving around too much. I should. Ugh. So frustrating. I should have locked it in. And that goes to show when you are thinking about something and you don't take the time to do it, you should do it. So now this is an older glue. It's just a wood glue, DuraPro. I'm heating it up to see if it's not so tacky, but I have a feeling I'm just gonna use the good old Gorilla Glue. It's a very clean break, so I should be able to tape it down to the point where nothing will uh, be seen. But, oh. <sighs> you know, let it learn, right? 